today we continue to think about living for the kingdom, living for Jesus, and how, how today we think about being a witness in our faith, being a witness for what God has done in our lives, how important that is for the kingdom, for the growth of God's kingdom, that we can be a witness and we can reflect on what God has done in our lives. So our reading today is from Acts chapter 1 and verses 1 to 8. <clears throat> in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, he was eating with them and gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, <coughs> Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. As we think about living for the kingdom, about God's kingdom growing, it's so important that we think about being a witness. We have a testimony of what God has done in our lives. Just as the disciples appeared there, they had a testimony, having met with the risen Saviour. And our encounters with him can continue to bring glory to God. Our encounters with the risen Saviour. Shortly after the resurrection, Jesus has appeared to his disciples and they are being provided with all they need to carry on the ministry. They have walked with Jesus and they are committed to following him. In fact, he says to them in Luke 24 verse 48, you are witnesses of these things. As we continue to think about living for the kingdom, a crucial part of this is being a witness. Being a witness of what God has done in our lives. All of us can be a witness. We think of those that we know who have, we say they have the gift for evangelism. They've got a real skill and a real gift at being able to do that. But we all have an opportunity for evangelism as well. We don't just leave it to one or two. We all have opportunities in the conversations that we have right where we are. Luke says here in verses one to three, how the disciples were eyewitnesses of what happened to Jesus. His life before his crucifixion, the 40, years, 40 days after his resurrection, and how he taught them more about the kingdom of God. You know, we read he continued, he spoke about them, about the kingdom of God. They were a witness. They had a testimony. It was a call to his disciples to carry on the good work to carry on the message. We read in verse, uh, verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I believe that was a call to us just as it was to the disciples then. They were called to be a witness to the ends of the earth and we are called to be a witness as well. In order to be a witness for the kingdom, we need to know the Saviour ourselves. Jesus appeared many times, proving that he was alive. They saw him on such a number of occasions and they would go on to suffer for their beliefs. Some of them would even die for their beliefs. Would they have all done that if they thought it was a hoax, if they knew it wasn't real? At the point of Jesus' death, they were scattered, they were disillusioned, fearing for their lives, perhaps fearing they would be next. 
and yet we read in verse 3, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a for period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. These disciples knew the Saviour. They knew who the Saviour was. They knew him personally. They'd witnessed it. They'd met with the risen Saviour. They faced imprisonments, beatings, rejections, and yet they never compromised their calling. They were fearless in the way they spread the good news, risked everything to share this good news. Surely that gives us convincing confidence that this wasn't a hoax, this wasn't something they'd made up, but they had encountered the risen Saviour. For us, we also need to know the risen Saviour. We might not have physically seen the risen Saviour in a way that the disciples had. But we can be a witness to what he's done in our lives. In fact, when uh, Doubting Thomas confronts Jesus, or his disciple called Thomas, that, who often gets given this nickname Doubting Thomas, we read in John twenty twenty nine, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. For us, we have a testimony of what he's done in our lives. We can be a witness of those things. We can be just as much a witness on our, for our daily walk with Jesus. How we know he's made a difference in our lives. All of us have a testimony. All of us can share about what he's done in our lives. And all of us will have the opportunities, as we'll come to a bit later on. So as well as knowing the Saviour, we need to have a desire for salvation for others. Part of being a witness in the kingdom is wanting others to come to faith. The disciples wanted others to hear the message, for that message to spread, for others to come to faith. As you read in uh, Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. We can see what the disciples say about the kingdom being restored. In verse 6 of our passage today from, today from Acts 1, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They had a desire for his, the kingdom to be restored. They had a desire for others to come to know Jesus. They didn't quite understand what Jesus was doing at this point, and later they would do. Right the way through the, their time with Jesus, they often misunderstand things. Their view was that the Messiah would come and would be an earthly ruler that would feel free Israel from Rome. But Jesus spoke about a spiritual kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. As you read in John 18, 36, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Do we long for others to come to faith? Do we long for the kingdom to grow? Those disciples went about things with the urgency to bring people to salvation and for them to hear the good news. Do we have that urgency in our mindset of longing others to come to faith, thinking about our friends and family who don't yet know Jesus and how we long for them to come to faith? As we go about our daily lives, do we see it as opportunities coming up? Opportunities to share the good news with others? You know, Jesus doesn't say make converts of all nations, but make disciples of all nations. Getting alongside people, helping them grow in the faith. That's where it's so important. Do we have that desire, that burning desire to see others coming to faith as well? As well as knowing the Saviour and, ask, and uh, desiring for others to come to faith, we need to ask God's Spirit to help. Jesus makes it clear they will receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would help them. They had to wait for the Holy Spirit to come and be ready to go about the ministry to which they had been called. 
as Jesus says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come at Pentecost and the disciples had to wait for that moment. They had to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit before they would be ready. It was made to all. The Holy Spirit came and he was available to all who believed in Jesus Christ. We receive the Holy Spirit when we receive Jesus. The Spirit marks the beginning of the Christian experience. We need his Spirit to go about these things. You read in Romans 8 verse 9. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. The Spirit is the power of our new lives. The disciples must have been wondering what would happen, how the Holy Spirit would come, as they're promised in uh, John 14, 26, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, would come whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, will remind you of everything I have said to you. Because I believe it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the boldness, the courage, the confidence, the insight, the ability to grow in our witness, to be a witness. Do we know that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives, giving us the confidence for what lies ahead? This can give us the, the assurance that the Holy Spirit is with us. Perhaps we feel inadequate, we feel we're unable to be a witness for the kingdom. And yet we are reminded that the Holy Spirit is with us. The places that we go to, the opportunities that we have, the Holy Spirit will be there with us, helping us. Pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us in those moments, in those conversations, in those relationships, for us to be a witness. The disciples were promised they would receive the Holy Spirit, they would receive his power and they would see extraordinary results. That promise, I believe, is there for us as well. We are not called to witness in our own strength, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. All of us can show and tell what God has done for us. And finally, it's so important for us to take the opportunities all of us will have opportunities to share our faith. There are times we meet those who don't yet know Jesus. What is our witness like? What do people see in us? Pray each day for the opportunities and for us to be alert for those opportunities. We read in Ephesians 5, 16, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. We perhaps know those who have that gift for evangelism to walk up to somebody to strike a conversation to talk openly about their faith straight away, even to someone they've never met. That works for some and not for others. For many others, it's just the opportunity to get alongside others, to be a witness, to encourage people, to say, just to say I'm praying for you. Showing acts of kindness, being the people they can rely on. Pray for us as a church at Lisway for all the opportunities throughout the week of people coming in through the doors but the opportunity for people to be a witness. Pray for God's spirit to be at work in those places, for friendship evangelism. Being brave enough simply to say, I'm praying for you. Take every opportunity. Perhaps you know those moments where you just missed the opportunity or we weren't thinking about it. Pray each day that God will show us where the opportunities are. We can think about those close to us, but even those we've never met, but just pray for those divine appointments that we can take every opportunity. When we think about the kingdom, we need to be a good witness and to help the kingdom grow. As we read in verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That was the commission for the disciples to take every opportunity and it's there for us as well. To be a witness for the kingdom, we need to know the Saviour, truly know Jesus in our lives, be walking with him each day so we can share the testimony of what he's done in our lives. Desire salvation for others, really want other people to come to that, that knowledge of the risen Saviour. 
and to ask for God's spirit to help us and to take every opportunity. Pray for where he is showing us the opportunities and pray for him to be with us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for your great love, for all that you've done in our lives. We pray for our witnesses. We pray for our opportunities, that we would take the opportunities when you give them to us. To show your love and kindness to others and to know that we are your witnesses. So we ask that we can go in the power of your Holy Spirit and share our faith, share our testimony of the risen Saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>